The project actually started um, or, or, or kind of became a, a possibility with um, a piece of work that I uh, did for Cumbria Tourism. They had uh, an idea about using historic guides in terms of their destination marketing of, of, uh, of the Lake District. And particularly they wanted me to look at um, the text uh, written by Thomas West and uh, West's key invention in his guide to the Lake District was uh, the landscape station which um, people would recognize on an ordnance survey map now by the kind of splayed format of a viewpoint and um, so he he wrote a narrative um, chapter by chapter lake by lake of the Lake District and that what he was really doing was at each point composing a picturesque image of the of the landscape all this demonstrated was the immense amount of license that artists had taken with the landscape, composing it in elements of foreground, distance, middle ground, tree to the left. If you like, their proposition that um, you know you could go to this point and the view would be framed was completely false. Um, and the, the way that he he wrote about it made me focus on the water tables themselves. You know, when you get your Ordnance Survey map, you'll find contour after contour detailing the form of the mountains, but you'll find nothing detailing the depths of, of the lakes. And I, I have a, you know, I have a lifetime's experience of um, being around that water, you know, from childhood. And because I've sailed on a lot of the different lakes, I know how different the water is, that the water is not the same, and I just felt that this was all completely unregarded. As a teenager I worked for a book binder and so I've, I knew how to make and stitch a book, and so I made a book of blank pages and cut um, uh, a survey of uh, wast water out of it and scaled it. And when I showed that model to, to Locus Plus, um, they said, and, and I'd abandoned the idea because of the, of the, amount, the amount of work involved, um, they said, well, what would be the stages in um, making the whole lake district, you know, to do that, not just one lake, um, but the whole lake district. That then became an exercise in actually c physically collecting the data that I could compose that model out of. When you're looking, for instance, at the, at the image of Elter water that's created in the book, um, the original data that's collated there was actually um, put together by two guys in a rowing boat with a length of wetted hemp rope with a stone on the end. And, you know, they would take points uh, at various points and then they would triangulate that point. And the density of those, uh, of those surveys increases with um, the introduction of kind of electronic equipment. All this material was taken to, to Price and Myers and who, who constructed um, a, a landscape model which would measure about 50 miles by 50 miles by about a kilometre. And actually they were, they were immediately helpful. I remember going and taking a bunch of you know, Lake District guides and other notes and, and talking to one of their directors about how um, I could see the project coming together and you know as engineers always do he, he was straight into how would we do this as opposed to why would we do this and, and really from just that initial discussion it was really clear that their method uh, would would be completely robust I was you know I was very happy. My name's Rob Hadrill uh, I'm co-director of Bookworks I run the studio. We mainly focus on producing limited edition works or uh, one-offs. Christian Barnes approached us with this particular project and was trying to find a form to show the uh, contours relating to the lakes within the Lake District at the different altitudes and um, had come up with a large format book. The book itself will be a hardback uh, with a fairly straightforward uh, fabric cover uh, printed there's a couple of blank pages to start with and then it's the contours of the first lake that, that appears at the highest altitude 
and then literally just working down uh, to sea level. So it's quite a simple, simple idea, uh, and we're trying to produce it in as simple a way as possible. And uh, dealing with a book of this size, you can't guillotine the edges. Uh, there are no industrial processes you can do, so all the edges of the pages have to be cut and folded by hand. But cutting the contours is, is just something that you have to do accurately uh, and be consistent about it. And it's very, very fine detail in a lot of places. Tiny little tributaries coming into, into the lakes all have to be picked out and all the islands built up in very fine detail. Uh, that's all done with a scalpel. And most of the time it requires two people to actually turn the page because otherwise you get crinkles and creases uh, in, in, in the, the, the folded foredge. So you've got to be very careful with the, with the handling um, when it's displayed and how it's opened in public. We'll need very careful... Um, consideration. What we do benefit from is having light coming from back, the, the back and the front of the building so you, you do get a nice sense of, of how the con contours are being cut uh, which is quite exciting. It looks great, it looks fantastic um, and, and the nice thing about it is, is that you don't get all the lakes at the same time on one sheet of paper, it just works gradually down so usually you just have one lake that's visible, sometimes two, occasionally three, that's visible at any one page. Um, so it is a, you know, a proper use of the book form where you're re gradually revealing the whole story. Now that the book is beginning to come together, I see that actually as an object, um, it really does have quite a, a, a big presence. You know, I'd not, I'd not thought of it in those terms before, but now I've seen it being practically constructed, I realise that it's of a scale where it could carry a room. When the page opens, it sits and it's two and a half metres wide. And so the page completely fills your field of view. And when you see these objects in the pages, do you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like um, looking at a you know, piece of jewellery on a tray. Do you know what I mean? They're, 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 they're very, very fine objects. And um, if you like, one of the things that I think the book reveals is the delicacy of the surface of the earth. I'm going to have to be blunt. I, I'm absolutely terrified of people um, seeing it. It was always exciting to me that it was immensely fragile. Um, but the risk of damage to it, and that, that, that is a source of um, more anxiety than I thought. I think I was, I was so excited by the possibility of just making it and thinking of it as an object and as a concept of a thing, that now that it has a, uh, if you like, a corporeal existence, I, I just feel that it's very, very fragile um and i think that's actually that fragility is one of the things that makes it precious Do you know what I mean? it's one of the things that makes it correspond to a you know tradition of of books elsewhere